Daniel Lowry here with Anti-Siphon Training, and we're going to continue our virtualization series with VMware Workstation Pro download and installation for both Windows and Linux. Whew, that was a mouthful. We got a lot to go through. A little quick recap of what VMware Workstation Pro is. It's a Type 2 hypervisor. That just means it's a software app that sits on top of your host OS and runs all the virtualization stuff that you need. Remember, this isn't a Type 1, those bare metal. It's not like a, an operating system with virtualization baked in, right? So we're sitting on top of that host OS. And that's where that comes into play, which is why we're going to do this for both Windows and Linux. This is a, a very wonderful thing because it is free for you to use which I love, even though it says pro on the end. You might be thinking, well, it might be money, right? The thing money. I think there is still some pay for options if you are using this in a very specific way. But for our purposes, our personal use, it is free for us. We like that. I love it. It's my favorite price, right? Free 99. Who doesn't love that? Just go and download and enjoy, right? Now, there are a couple of other systems that VMware makes that you might bump into. And just let me give you a real quick cap of what the difference is between the two. You might also see Player. Player is kind of a stripped down version of virtualization that VMware offers. Just gives you the bare bones, the just the bits you need to get virtualization happening. Whereas Pro has all the bells and whistles, all the fun stuff that we want out of virtualization, right? So you're probably gonna go, wanna go with that, especially if you're building labs and doing things, doing some testing, having some fun. You're going to want all the uh, extra settings that you can have from that pro version. You also might run into Fusion. I want to stop here for just a second and talk about Fusion. Fusion is for uh, Apple, right? So if you're running Apple hardware, a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro or Air, something to that effect, that's going to be your VMware option for those systems. So Fusion is great. I like Fusion. I've used Fusion a lot. And it works whether you're running on Intel hardware from the past or if you have something more contemporary, like an M1, M2, M3, or M4 system. They will work for both. You just got to get the right one. Here's the thing is when it comes to Apple, there are and will be for a little bit some compatibility issues, at least as of the filming of this episode anyway, right? And that all stems around that Apple Silicon. So if you're running the old Intel versions, you're good to go. You're, you could sail, you're set to jet. That said, if you are running that Apple Silicon, be prepared for some compatibility issues. And that's because they're ARM-based, right? They that, that Apple Silicon is an ARM architecture for their, their processors. All right. That's it. That's done. We're done with Apple. Let's move on to actually getting things downloaded and installed. So step one, download the installer. That's what we need to do. Now we get to run to our PC here. And the first thing you're going to do is run to Broadcom, which is profile.broadcom.com forward slash web forward slash registration. And that's because you have to register. You have to get a, a, an actual login. And that's where this is. You fill it out. You know what to do. This isn't your first rodeo when it comes to doing a registration, I'm sure. You've registered for plenty of other things, so I'll leave that to you. Go ahead and get registered and do the things you do. You can pause the video and then come back. But once you get that registration done, go ahead and use those credentials to log in. Now that you're ready to log in, or if you have logged in, then you're going to want to go to this web page, which is where you download Workstation Pro. Yes, it's telling me inactivity. I'm not inactive, I swear. Right? And you're going to click your link. Now, we have options for... Windows and Linux. So you have 17, 16, 15, and these are the options that I have available. And I think this is going to be the same for you. Now you might be thinking, why would I want one versus the other? Wouldn't I just want 17? It depends on some compatibility things, right? Maybe you're working with older virtual machines or things that are only supported by 15 or 16. So it's nice that we have those options. But yes, for the most part, you just want the latest and greatest. So you click Pro, you know, VMware Workstation Pro 17.0 for Windows. Easy. That downloads, which I already have right here under my downloads folder. I did rename mine to VMware Workstation. Oh, look at that. It, it logged me out. It's okay because I already have these things downloaded. But you go ahead and get that downloaded. I already have these done. I just named mine uh, VMware Workstation Install. And that, that's going to be fun. Yes, I can close this. Of course, it would do the same thing if you're running in a Linux system. Again, I'm in the download section, and I'll show you. I did not rename this one, so you can see it was VMware Workstation Full 
2440962 yeah dot bundle and if you're like oh what's a dot bundle file i for the most part it's just basically a shell script with some binary information in it so we're just going to run this as normal when we get to this we'll come back to that now now that we have uh our things downloaded which beat the old clock there didn't i we can move on to installation so, so this is step two install your workstation thing. Okay, I can close these browsers down. And don't worry, the links for this stuff, again, I'll put that in the description for you so you can get to all these things. I'm going to close out Brave, open my folder, and then go to Downloads and find my installation and just do what you do, double-click. Once that rocks and rolls and does and whirs and grinds, we get the little spinning blue cheerio. I'm just running... Uh, Windows 10 here, but you can, if you're on Windows 11 or even Windows 7 or something, you should be experiencing basically the same thing that I am. And we can see the Workstation Pro 17 logo pops up and starts getting thing. I'm just going to minimize that window so that we don't have to sit there and wait. Now, it might take a second, like what I'm experiencing right now. This could be a little bit of a process, so make sure you have enough time in your day and you're not going to get interrupted and that you can go through this. All right, starting to actually do some stuff, saying preparing to install, which is good. And there we go. We are on Yonder Wizard, which we love. What I love about Wizards is, is that you Basically, for the most part, you're just going to kind of next your way through it, right? I just clicked on the window. It gives me this thing. Welcome to the window, uh, VMware Workstation Pro Setup Wizard. I click Next. It gives me the, hey, we got a license agreements. You can read that at your leisure. I will leave that to you. But I'm just going to hit, I accept the terms and click Next. Again, we get to kind of next our way through here. Do I want to add VMware Workstation Console to my system path? That is a good thing to have checked. And then if you do want to change where the install is, you have the change button. So if you need to do it, but I'm going to go with the default installation, and that's what I recommend you do as well. We click Next. You also have a couple of check marks here for do you want to get product updates on startup? I find that to be a, a useful item, so I have a check, but you can uncheck it. And do you want to join the VMware Consumer Experience Improvement Program? Uh, you can that's default check, but you can check or uncheck. I'll just uncheck it for fun because why not? Because you don't get my data VMware. Ha ha ha. Next. Then the last thing I thought well, is it the last thing? We do have one more next. So we do have uh, do you want a shortcut on the desktop and the start menu? Again, usually pretty good ideas. So I click next there. Then it says 3D acceleration is disabled for VMs as DirectX 11 is not supported by the host. Click install to begin that installation or go back to review. So just some informational, we are at the end, we just need to install, and then installation is going to occur. Good news is it usually doesn't take too long. I think we've been at this for maybe about five minutes now or so. Uh, time is irrelevant to me as the as the, 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 the camera is on. It makes time very weird. I'm in some sort of weird dilation. <laughs> but ultimately, you're just going to sit here and be very patient and wait for this to get done. It's copying folders or uh, files over now, creating duplicates, shortcuts, writing registries. I see that my lovely icon has appeared on the screen or on my desktop. That is a good sign that things are going well. I haven't received any errors so far. Hopefully that we don't. That would be good. We've got a status of a green bar. I love green bar statuses that show me absolutely nothing. My favorite thing to go through. I think we're almost about done. If it takes too much longer, we'll jump over into Linux, but I think we're getting there. It says cleaning up legacy stuff, installing virtual network drivers, which is useful because we need networking stuff. And then it's just going to kind of continue to whir and grind. I say that, what do you think? We Should we move over to Linux and kind of get that installation going? I think we'll we'll do that. So let's jump over. While that's doing that... Let's jump back over to Linux. And for us here, we just need to do some, some sudoing, right? Because you're going to need those privs. And so open your terminal, go to wherever your dot bundle file is. And then you're just going to do slash bin slash bash. And then give it dot slash VMware. And I just tab completed that out. So just, just get the first couple of characters in there to make sure it's, it's unique enough for tab to complete you out. And then just hit the tab button to complete. Hit enter, and then, of course, you're going to be prompted ultimately for your favorite little uh, password of choice. 
Mine is a bit extensive, so give me a second here. There we go. I have to actually concentrate on that password. It's so crazy, and I still might not have gotten it right. We'll see. But if I got my password right, installation should begin, which is great for us. And good. I got my password right. Ooh, it is a red letter day for Daniel. All right. And then this is what it's going to do. It's going to start installation. All right. Well, that's doing that. It's working on configuring. It is all text-based. And then I think eventually we will get to a GUI here momentarily. But let's jump back over to Windows and see where it's at. All right. It has completed the VMware Workstation Pro setup wizard. And we can click finish. Whew. That is awesome. Let's jump back into a Linux and see where that's at. Again, it's still configuring, working its way through things. So we'll continue to let that go. Let's jump back into Windows and actually launch VMware and take a look at some of the, the neat things that is available to us. So just double click the icon and that will take a moment. This is the first time it's running, it's like, hey, I'm in a new environment. I don't even know what to do. This is kind of neat. All right, now this is fun right here. This is your... Hey, you need to enter a license key to allow for commercial use. So if you're running a shop where you needed VMware, you weren't doing it for just personal things, you would need that license key for commercial use, which is something you have to pay for. But so because we're just building home labs and doing fun stuff with it and just kind of testing things, we're going to click that first option that says use VMware Workstation 17 for personal use or whatever version you have. Then click continue. And now, thank you. And click finish, and we kids are running VMware Workstation. We have a lot of fun things to look at, things that we can do, like create a new virtual machine, open virtual machines, connect to a remote server. This is insane. We have some, if we go to file and uh, look at some of the things that we have here, which is basically you can uh, create a new virtual machine, kind of some, some of the same quick links that we have right there in the dashboard. You can also go to virtual network editor. This is a lot of really fun stuff. I mean, you notice we have a free update that is ready. I'm going to just remind me later on that because we're kind of in the middle of something, but I definitely would want to update that. Go back to edit, hit that virtual network editor. And this is where you kind of play around, create virtual networks, set IP addresses, DHCP, all sorts of fun stuff, which will then be available for your virtual machine so that you can do networking inside of this. Really cool stuff. With the VMs, if you had a VM here, you'd be able to manage it. You'd be able to do things like once you have a VM installed, you can set how much uh, RAM it has available, how uh, how to work with the CPUs that are available, how many cores do you want to give per CPU, that fun stuff. You can also work with snapshots. Snapshots are always a good time because they're actually like my favorite thing when it comes to virtualization because I can make all sorts of changes. And if I completely just bork the install, everything just sets on fire, well, then I just revert back to my snapshot. But that is the caveat. You have to make sure that you're making snapshots before you make changes because you can only revert to the state of the snapshot as it was. So, But it does make your life a whole lot easier if things go sideways on you. All right, let's jump back in and see what happens. Here, where are we at? We are at configuring 100% in Linux, and we'll see how that goes. It does say installation was successful. Yay, we love it. What do we do now? Well, we go, we can close this window. I'm running Ubuntu, but basically you're just going to start looking for your VMware system. And you can see there's our icon that we are familiar with at this point. I click on that icon and kind of same kind of stuff. I accept the terms in the license agreement. Click next. I accept the terms in the license agreement. Click next. By the way, you should absolutely read those. If, <laughs> right? If you are completely bored and are maybe an insomniac or something. Would I like to check for product updates on startup? Yes, I do like that. So I'm going to click next on that. But you do what you want. And then do I wish to join the CEIP, the improvement program? Just like before, I'm going to click no for that because I'm, I'm a weird person. It is asking me now for my password. Uh, put that in. There we go with my crazy, insane password, which drives me crazy. Oh, look, 
This is looking very familiar, right? Create a virtual machine, open a virtual machine, connect to a server. I got the same kind of stuff here in file. And look, I have virtual network editor. I can go to preferences. I can change things about my preferences. I now have this installed and so do you. Hopefully that is a big help for you. All the same bells and whistles in both Linux and Windows versions of this. So if you're running one or the other, it should be fairly parody. Uh, where things are and moving about the, the cabin, as it were. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. i got more to come in our virtualization series, so be sure to join me for that. And if you got some, some use out of this video, if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe notification bell for when new stuff comes out. Follow Antisiphon on all our socials, LinkedIn, you name it, we're there. Find us in those social areas and follow us to see what we're up to. I do look forward to see you there. And until next time, have a great day.